Your Excellencies, Mrs. Maria Luisa Ribeiro Viotti, Chef de Cabinet of the United Nations Secretary General, Dr. Natalia Kanem, Executive Director of the UNFPA and Secretary of the Committee for the United Nations Population Award, members of the Committee for the United Nations Population Award, distinguished laureates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Committee for the United Nations Population Award, I have the privilege and great pleasure to welcome you all to the 2020 United Nations Population Award virtual ceremony. I would like to welcome on behalf of the committee, Mrs. Maria Luisa Ribeiro Viotti, Chef de Cabinet of the United Nations Secretary General, for representing the Secretary General at this ceremony and to kindly ask her to convey to His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, our deep appreciation for the message he sends to us today that will follow shortly after. I also extend the assurances uh, of the highest appreciation of the members of the, of the Committee for the United Nations Population Award to Dr. Natalia Kanem, Executive Director of the UNFPA, for her notable leadership as the Secretary of the Committee. Excellencies, the story of the United Nations Population Award spans 39 years. In 1981, the United Nations Member States, in an effort to recognize the importance of population and development issues, established the United Nations Population Award, so we may pay tribute to those who have made outstanding contributions to raising awareness on population questions and dedicated their life's work to developing and implementing solutions to those pressing issues. This year's award ceremony is being conducted virtually within the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. But even though this global pandemic disrupts economies, overwhelms health and social services, shatters businesses and triggers a spike in gender-based violence, Governments and partners are signaling that their commitment to the health and rights of women and girls is unflagging. One year ago, at the landmark Nairobi summit on ICPD-25, more than 8,000 delegates from 170 countries, representing governments, academia, civil society, corporate partners and others, made some 13 hundred commitments in support of sexual and reproductive health and rights. The pledges focus on funding or implementing programs to achieve zero preventable maternal death, zero unmet need for contraception, and zero gender-based violence and harmful practices like child marriage and female genital mutilation by the year 2030. Excellencies, Ladies and gentlemen, along these storied years, the manner in which the member states and other stakeholders have addressed population issues has positively evolved. We must continue to forge ahead implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals with the aim of securing progress in the areas of human rights, health, women's empowerment and education. This ceremony is a great opportunity to remind of the achievements we have made and to renew our commitment to further transformative and inclusive development with human beings at the center. Since this award was first presented in 1981, and especially in the wake of the adoption of the International Conference on Population and Development Program of Action in 1994, we have made considerable achievements including the following. The global percentage of young women who were married before age 18 has declined from 34% in 1994 to 25% in 2019. The global fertility rate has declined from 3.2 births per woman in 1990 to 2.5 births per woman in 2019. Human life expectancy has increased by seven years since 1994. 
Maternal mortality has declined by 40% since 1994 and poverty by half. Primary school is now accessible to most children in the world more than ever before. All of these gains are part of a massive surge in human capabilities, together with demographic change that in many parts of the world are driving accelerated development. The year 2019 was a very significant one in terms of population and development dynamics. The world's population was estimated to be 7.7 .7 billion in 2019, and it is further expected to increase to 9.7 billion by 2050. So it's about an increase of 26 percent. The population of the sub-Saharan African region, one of the most youthful regions in the world, is projected to double by 2050. Many of the fastest population growing countries are poor in economic terms. Therefore, these countries face additional challenges in their efforts to eliminate poverty and achieve the SDGs in the context of COVID-19 crisis. This pandemic highlighted that we all, governments and partners, need to work together closer than ever to build back better and greener in order to achieve the SDGs by 2030. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Population Award, which is the most prestigious award given annually in the United Nations system on this subject, has proven to be a powerful instrument for promoting awareness on population questions and for honoring significant contributions of individuals and institutions that have put their knowledge in the service of the mankind for the well-being of people and nations. I call upon all stakeholders, including government representatives, civil society, academia, the private sector and media, to encourage more individuals and institutions to bring their contributions to the attention of the committee through the established nomination process. This, in turn, will lead to more awareness on the importance of population issues and to the achievement of sustainable development. I thank you for your attention. And uh, now, Excellencies, ladies and, and gentlemen, on behalf of the committee, let me congratulate the laureates of the 2020 United Nations Population Award. In the individual category, Her Majesty Gayum Sanki Chuden Bangchuk, Queen Mother of the Kingdom of Bhutan. In the institutional category, Help Age India. The committee, comprised of 10 member states along with UNFPA and DESA as ex officio members, considered six candidates in the individual category and nine in the institutional category. I can say on behalf of the members of the committee that it was an honor to be entrusted with such an important task of selecting this year's laureates. For the two laureates who have been selected, we hope this is an adequate recognition of their inspiring work. We pause for a moment now for a video presentation on the UN Population Award.
I have now the great pleasure to invite our distinguished guest, Mrs. Maria Diotti, Chef de Cabinet in the Office of the Secretary General of the United Nations, to deliver a statement on behalf of His Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. Ambassador Yonjinga, Dr. Natalia Kanem, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to join you today and to deliver the following message on behalf of the Secretary General. And I quote, it is a pleasure to join you in recognizing this year's Population Award laureates. The honorees are inspiring partners on our shared journey toward inclusive, resilient, and sustainable development. As we honor their achievements, the COVID-19 pandemic continues to threaten to undo hard-fought progress towards the sustainable development goals. This emergency has underscored the urgent need to invest in strengthened health systems, including for sexual and reproductive health, to protect women and girls from gender-based violence and harmful practices, and to promote economic development that accounts for demographic diversity. The pandemic has also highlighted several global fragilities and vulnerabilities from climate change and environmental degradation to gender discrimination and rising inequalities. As we recover from COVID-19, we must address these ills too. This is why I have proposed a new social contract within countries with a focus on social protection, education, and digital technology. I have also proposed a new global deal among countries to build a fair globalization and ensure that power, wealth, and opportunities are shared more broadly and equitably. In this context, the United Nations Population Award is an important means to recognize the need to protect the human rights and nurture the human potential of all. It is fitting, therefore, that the 2020 laureates, Her Majesty Queen Mother, Wiyun Sanche Chuden Wanchuk of the Kingdom of Bhutan, winner in the individual category, and Help Age India, winner in the institutional category, were both selected for their dedication to the rights and well-being of women, young people, and older persons. Her Majesty has used the power of her voice and position to address gender inequalities at all levels of society and has been recognized for her advocacy for the prevention of HIV in Bhutan and internationally. Help Age India focuses on the needs of disadvantaged older persons advocating for social protection, universal health care, and targeted interventions to prevent elder abuse. I commend the awardees and look forward to the contributions they will make at the grassroots and in the international arena as the world strives to recover better from COVID-19. I thank the United Nations Population Award Committee, chaired by Ambassador Jan Jingen of Romania, and commend UNFPA Executive Director, Dr. Natalia Kanem, for her role as Secretary of the Committee. The work of this year's laureates and international cooperation in general are needed more than ever. I thank you. And this concludes the remarks by the Secretary General. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Viotti. We will now proceed with the reading of the citations of the award. The General Assembly has declared that this award be presented, and I quote, the most outstanding contribution to the awareness of population questions or to their solutions, end of quotation. It is my distinct pleasure to invite Dr. Natalia Kanem, Executive Director of UNFPA and Secretary of the Committee for the United Nations Population Award, to read the citation on the certificate of the laureate in the individual category. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my very great pleasure to read the citation for the laureate in the individual category. 
Her Majesty Gyalyum Sangye Chodeng Wangchuk, Queen Mother of the Kingdom of Bhutan. In recognition of your steadfast commitment and leadership to realize gender equality and women's empowerment in Bhutan, your strong actions in highlighting the centrality of essential health and fundamental rights issues, such as sexual and reproductive health and rights for women and adolescents, and your outreach and engagement with community-based networks to promote economic independence among women, to remove societal stigmas towards vulnerable groups, and to both prevent and help assist victims of gender-based violence. End of citation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Kanem. It is my pleasure to invite Her Majesty Gayum Sangi Chuden Bangchuk, Queen Mother of the Kingdom of Bhutan, to deliver her statement. I convey the greetings of Their Majesties the Kings, the Royal Government, and the people of Bhutan to all present at this virtual award ceremony today. I am delighted and honored and also deeply humbled to be recognized as the individual laureate for the 2020 United Nations Population Award. I wish to acknowledge the presence of their Royal Highnesses, the Prince and Princesses, and the Prime Minister of Bhutan. Mr. Chairperson, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I extend my deepest appreciation to the members of the United Nations Population Award Committee for conferring me with this prestigious award. This award is deeply significant to me as it not only represents a subject very close to my heart, but it also represents the hopes and aspirations of women and children from the most vulnerable sections of society. Furthermore, it represents the amazing endurance and the united spirit in all of us. I congratulate my fellow laureate, Help Age India, for their recognition in the institutional category for 2020. I'm very inspired by all that they do for the disadvantaged elderly people in India. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have achieved several milestones in the area of population and development since the 1994 United Nations Conference in Cairo. The adoption of the Landmark Program of Action awakened a global consensus that sexual and reproductive health, gender equality, and the empowerment of women are fundamental to development. 25 years later, I was delighted to attend the ICPT conference in Nairobi, where we acknowledge that these interventions are indispensable for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. This momentum has deeply influenced developments in my country, Bhutan, as well as my own efforts to support national programs to improve the lives of women and girls. Bhutan has always prioritized the welfare of our people. We recognize the fact that fundamental issues such as sexual and reproductive health care, if left unaddressed, will prevent our women and girls from realizing their full potential in social, educational, and economic spheres. In 1999, I became the Goodwill Ambassador for the UNFPA. In these 21 years, I have traveled to the remote corners of my country, and I met with our women and girls. Listening to their stories and understanding the problems they endure gave me insights into the obstacles they face to realize their dreams and aspirations. 
The foremost challenge in the early years was to destigmatize issues of sexual and reproductive health, such as family planning, teenage pregnancy, and HIV AIDS, amongst others. Although Bhutan is a largely open and liberal society, issues concerning sexual and reproductive health were still considered too intimate to discuss openly in households and communities. The primary objective at the time was to create an enabling environment to inculcate social acceptance to discuss sexual and reproductive health. Through health advocacy programs, inclusion of sex education in the school curricula, dissemination of information to mainstream media and other mediums, we were successful in creating awareness and assuring communities that the discourse of sexual and reproductive health is not only socially acceptable, but essential. Gender-based violence and violence against women, girls and children is another area I remain deeply committed to addressing. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today our women and girls have better education and employment opportunities than ever before. They are healthier and participate in the decisions that most affect them, enabling them to, be, to build better futures for themselves and their families. However, my work is far from over and much remains to be done. An unprecedented challenge confronts us today. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken a heavy toll on our women and girls. Gender-based violence, mostly domestic violence, has escalated significantly in our communities during this pandemic. I'm very concerned that this unprecedented situation will impede our efforts to advance the sexual and reproductive health and rights of women and girls. Recent progress with the COVID-19 vaccine is most encouraging. It is my sincere and fervent hope that the vaccine will be made accessible to all in an equitable and affordable manner, especially to the most vulnerable and high-risk groups. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I feel the enormous responsibility of this recognition, which inspires and motivates me to persevere in my efforts to make a difference in the lives of our women and girls. As honored as I am to receive this prestigious UN Population Award today, I do so in recognition that the accolade is the shared one. Today, I wish to pay tribute to all the individuals and organizations who have supported my efforts and helped to make this milestone a reality. I'm grateful to their majesties, the kings, for their profound vision and leadership. I thank the Royal Government of Bhutan, the Ministry of Health, UNFP, national and international partners, and volunteers for their unstinting support extended to me in the last 21 years. I'm very grateful to all my family, friends, and well-wishers who have supported my efforts and enrich the lives of many women and children in need. I wish to acknowledge and thank all the committed men and women who have been an important part of my work and journey of over two decades. Most importantly, I thank my dear parents for their unconditional love, care, support, and encouragement throughout this long journey. The values and discipline they instilled in me have greatly influenced my work and purpose in life. My wonderful children also deserve my deepest express expression of gratitude for their love and understanding. And finally, I would like to thank the United Nations 
Population Award Committee once more for recognizing my work and honoring me with this prestigious laureate. I accept this award with profound humility and dedicate it to all women who have shown extraordinary courage in the face of adversity. I also de dedicate this award to the people of my country who have shown me great kindness, love and support during the 21 years of my work and journey. As we leave here today and adapt to life in a new normal, I send a prayer flag fluttering through the airwaves, emitting positive energy in all directions. And as I do so, I pray for wisdom and resilience to overcome challenges and courage to persist in our efforts to make our world a more compassionate and better place for our men, women, and children. I thank you all for joining me here today. Thank you so much, Your Majesty Yayum Sangi Chuden Bangchuk, Queen Mother of the Kingdom of Bhutan. And now, for the institutional category, I kindly request again Dr. Kanem to read the citation on the diploma of the laureate in the institutional category. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my distinct pleasure to read the citation for our laureate in the institutional category, Help Age India. In recognition of the significant contribution of Help Age India through programs and services that work with and for older persons in India, addressing their rights, health, income, and social protection needs. Engagement and advocacy with local organizations that also support older persons. And interventions in livelihood, post-natural disaster relief, rehabilitation, and risk reduction programs to ensure that the well-being of older persons is at the center of development, enabling them to live full, dignified, and healthy lives. End of citation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Kanem. I now have great pleasure to invite Mr. Kiran Karnik, Chairperson, Help Age India, to deliver his statement. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Excellencies, dignitaries, everyone, namaste, greetings. It is my honor on behalf of Help Age India to receive the UN Population Award 2020 in the institutional category. I would like to thank the United Nations, UNFPA, Chair of the Jury, Ambassador Jinga, and jury members for the recognition of our work. Established in 1981, it has been awarded earlier to two Indians, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1983 and Mr. J.R.G. Tata in 1992. We are delighted to join them as the first Indian organization to receive it in the category of institutions. We are also proud to be in the company of other much acclaimed past awardees from around the world. My congratulations to the individual awardee for this year, Her Excellency, the Queen Mother of the Kingdom of Bhutan. Her work in this area, especially with regard to gender issues, is well known, and the award is a fitting recognition of that. Globally, with falling fertility rates, concerns about population growth have been increasingly replaced by emphasis on mother and child health, empowerment of women, including through informed choice and care of the aged. Our work in Helpage India focuses on the last, and so we are particularly happy to see it being brought center stage through this award, drawing attention to the large and growing segment of the population, the elders. 
thanks to the advances in medical sciences and better health care people are now living longer in india life expectancy has increased from 50 years in the period 1970 to 75 to almost 70 years in 2014 to 18 as a result the number of elders has been growing rapidly in india we now have about 138 million people who are over 60 years a number that is estimated to increase to 194 million in 2031 with slowing population growth the percentage in the population will grow from around 10% now to 13% in this period and to as much as 20% by 2050 the rate of growth of those who are 80 plus is even more dramatic with their number increasing from about 15 million to 24 million in this decade representing a growth of approximately 60% compared to the expected overall population growth of 8% These numbers for India are reflective of a global trend the timelines vary from country to country the number of elders is increasing rapidly everywhere and in a very large number of countries their proportion of population is getting larger aging of the aged too is a worldwide phenomenon that poses many problems elders face numerous challenges from the financial to physical to psychological In India, a fair number, but of course only a minuscule percentage of all elders are financially well off and independent. Even they have health care and emotional needs. However, an overwhelming proportion of the elders are financially dependent on their family and live with them. In many cases, they are perceived as a burden, and this sometimes results in ill treatment and even violence, sickness, and chronic afflictions. obviously common amongst elders can mean large and unforeseen expenditures something that most families cannot afford there are also a large number of elders who are destitute sometimes with no one to look after them government programs for housing health care and health insurance do provide some safety net to elders there is also old age pension and some old age homes however given the number of elders and the magnitude of the problems both coverage and amount are far from adequate pensions for example cover but a small part of the cost of even survival needs further there are problems of reach and access especially in rural areas of a vast country like india we in help age india seek in a limited way to supplement and complement government's efforts even as we seek to broaden these Our work covers four major areas. The first is advocacy, through which we try to promote policies that are elderly friendly. This includes efforts to increase and universalize old age pensions, as also other policies that would improve the well-being of elders. The second is health care, including social and emotional support. Our mobile health units, 156 of them now, deliver services to the doorstep focusing on areas not well covered by the government health system these provide free health care services to destitute elders physio care and cancer care and palliative services to the terminally ill last year over 3 million free treatments were provided home care support to bedridden patients and cataract surgeries to restore vision are other major services the third is livelihood support elder self help groups have been formed covering over 95000 people to 7400 groups we see our role as being catalytic with elders taking on full responsibility in due course further at times of crisis like floods cyclones and earthquakes our teams go on site to provide immediate relief and then to ensure early rehabilitation the last is providing direct and ongoing support particularly to the destitute through aged care initiatives such as old age homes and a national network of elder help lines through the primary mode of elder care especially in india's socio cultural context is and must necessarily be the family this is sometimes not possible care homes are then essential for such elders 
Amongst other initiatives are digital literacy workshops to empower elders, promoting active aging and multi-activity centers. We partner with over 5,500 senior citizen associations with over 1 million members and organize elder groups which provide mutual support and interaction platforms for elders. Intergenerational interaction is promoted through school and youth engagement. The many issues facing elders have been greatly amplified and expanded over the last one year as we seek to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. As is well known, elders are more vulnerable and need to take special care. In addition, the lockdown imposed due to COVID and the subsequent precautions have often meant that elders have been completely confined to their homes, exacerbating mental stress. In this context, Helpage India mounted special efforts, providing medicines, healthcare, rations, free meals, protective hygiene kits, and undertaking home visits to immobilized elders. It has reached out to over a million elders and their families, destitute and homeless persons, and migrants across India through its various relief initiatives during the COVID-19 pandemic. Also, our field teams have been active in spreading awareness in addition to the ongoing relief efforts. Epic India has worked with elders for almost four decades now. The global recognition of our efforts through this prestigious award serves as a further encouragement for us to achieve even more. It will also enable us to reach out more widely for support to deepen and expand our network. Many donors, both institutions and individuals, provide resources to us, and we would not exist but for their generosity. We look forward to even greater assistance from them. Finally, in proudly accepting this very prestigious award, I want to specially acknowledge the hard work and dedication of my colleagues in Helpage India, led for two decades by Matthew Cherian and now by Rohit Prasad. Our teams in the field have bravely weathered many storms, both literally and figuratively, to provide assistance to elders, sometimes, as now in the midst of COVID, at personal risk. A heartfelt word of thanks to our government too, at the central, state and local level, with whom we continue to work very closely. I must also acknowledge the strong support of fellow board members who have provided invaluable guidance in strategic direction and our partner organizations. Our biggest partners are, of course, the elders with whom we seek to create a better present and future. Elders everywhere deserve nothing less. Thank you once again to the UN, UNFPA and the award jury. Thank you. I think we we lost the connection with uh, Mr. Karnik. If you hear me, thank you so much, Mr. Karnik, and congratulations again to both distinguished laureates for their incredible, their amazing work and, and results. Excellencies, ladies and, and gentlemen, members of the committee, distinguished laureates, and Dr. Kanem, Allow me to remind you that the committee looks forward to receiving nominations for the 2021 round of deliberations by 31st December 2020. On behalf of the Committee for the United Nations Population Award, I thank you all for attending the ceremony. On this note, the United Nations Population Award virtual ceremony for 2020 is now adjourned. And on a personal note, I wish you all Good health, stay safe, and have a wonderful New Year. All the best. Thank you.